Hey, welcome to Church for Business People. My name is Pastor M uh, and it's so, so great to see you. My goodness, we continue with this Kingdom Business Adventure. It's another month. It's a month of June. And ah, my goodness, I can't wait. I'm so excited to see all of you checking in. Uh, please, you know the drill as you're checking in. Just tell us where you're checking in from, where you're watching this from. Uh, just so people know you're there and you're engaging with the rest of us. And hey, as we're starting off this month of June, uh, the theme that we're going to be addressing is Kingdom Business Basics. And uh, today we want to just dig off by looking at the nature of Kingdom Business. And I know that there are going to be some good things that God is teaching us in this season about what our businesses must be. But before we start, uh, do me a favor, just click share, uh, let your friends know, send them on a WhatsApp text, whatever it takes. Just let people know about this so that you're watching this and you're benefiting along with others. If you haven't yet liked our channel, uh, do that, uh, subscribe, uh, click the notification button. We'd love to just be able to so that you're always able to get uh, the content as it comes out and as it's fresh. Now, one of the things we always do, and, and, and I also say one of the things that we I, I like to just challenge our people to do is to click on the, there's a link at the bottom of this uh, broadcast that is our WhatsApp community. And that's such an important thing. It's a business WhatsApp community. It's not just any other WhatsApp community. We've got several, but this is specifically for Kingdom business people. And so if you are interested, in getting insights about kingdom business, in connecting with uh, just things that would help you become a good kingdom business person, uh, then please click on this. And it's not a WhatsApp group, so you're not going to be spammed by people giving you a lot of uh, things to read, uh, but it's just going to be specifically uh, curated content to help you grow as a kingdom business person. So we always start with worship, and I just want to invite my friend Kanji to lead us in this time of worship. This song, this is like an anthem right now yeah. all over the world, all right? Over the world right now. And, and um, we just want to pray this over you right now. Um, and this is the blessing. This is the benediction, actually. Right? Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, man. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Thousand 
generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children Worshipped. Amen. And God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you so much, my brother Kanji. And I know that you're a passionate kingdom business person. And that is why you're so passionate to be a partner with me as we do this and as we bring God's wisdom to God's people. So thank you for leading us. God is in the house. 
and he's our God and we are so excited to worship him and to commit ourselves to him as kingdom entrepreneurs. So if you're just joining us, uh, so glad to have you. Welcome. Uh, this is Church for Business People. And, uh, you know, let us know where you're, you're checking in from. Just click on where you're, let, let us know you're there. And also, uh, if there's a link at the bottom of this broadcast that tells you how to join our WhatsApp community, a place where you can get exclusive content that is tailored for Kingdom Entrepreneurs. Now, um, this month we're going through the Proverbs Challenge Reloaded. And I hope uh, many of you who are watching this, that you're reading through the book of Proverbs. Uh, you can actually find some content. There's, there's a button on the screen right now that just shows you how you can get a, a link that you can get more information from the Mavuno website. Uh, it's a phenomenal experience. We're reading through the Bible together. Today is third. And so we're on chapter three of, of Proverbs, one of my, and one of my favorite verses, uh, it, actually in all of scripture, is in this scripture that we read today. Uh, Proverbs chapter three, verse five, I know many of you know it, trust in the Lord with all your heart. I'm, I'm reading a, a version of the Bible called, uh, uh, called the, the Passion uh, version. And it says, trust in the Lord completely. Do not rely on your own opinions. With your heart, rely on him to guide you and he will lead you in every decision you make. Isn't that amazing? That's exactly what we need as kingdom entrepreneurs. Uh, that we stop relying on our own opinions, on the opinions of the world. We start relying on the opinion of the master and that he will guide us in every one of our decisions. That's what, we, that's what we're here to do tonight. I want to just, uh, we're going to be dig digging right into this whole concept today of kingdom business. Uh, there's been a, quite a few questions in our community and one of the questions that keeps recurring is, please explain this whole concept of kingdom business. I, I, I'm not very familiar with it. And that's what we want to do. We want to just dig into, deeper into in this month of June, into talking about what is kingdom business. I'm going to be introducing you to a friend of mine. I've, I've, I've enjoyed doing interviews uh, every week. And so I'm going to introduce you to a friend of mine uh, before we just jump into a few of those concepts. Her name is Frida Winger. I, one thing I like about Frida, I spent some time earlier with her this week. I like the fact that she's passionate about helping people discover their passion. And so her business if you want to call it that her business is to help other people discover their business and turn their passion into profit. So without further ado, here's Frida. Awesome. Well, uh, welcome. I just want to give a big, big shout out to my good friend, uh, Frida Winger. Uh, Frida is the founder of Passion Profit Limited, which is a learning and development company. Frida has over 20 years experience in business operations, she's worked in different uh, leadership and management positions, and she's also the founder of Founders Profit Academy. I love that because last time I, we talked, Frida, you were the CEO, and I, you, I love the fact that you told me I'm no longer the CEO. I just told you, when, when somebody tells me I'm no longer the CEO of my own company, I'm always like, that's progress right there. Because now you have somebody else running the company while you do what you're passionate about. Now, the thing about yeah. you, Frida, is you're an entrepreneur, but your passion in entrepreneurship is to help other people discover their passion so they can be effective entrepreneurs. So, so tell us about that. Tell, tell us what Passion Profit is about and how you're running it. All right. Passion Profit is about helping people discover their passion, package, combine their proficiency so that they can produce purposeful profit. And purposeful profit is profit that comes all the time. It doesn't come and go, all right? So we help you figure out who are you? Who are you becoming? You have been around a while. You've gone to school. What did you learn? Why did you learn it? Who are your networks? So we help you package that so that you can deliver it and get purposeful profit. Because we believe that as people of God, that portion, the Bible has said that uh, he will teach us, he will lead us in the way to go and he will teach us how to profit. So we believe in profit. <laughs> wow, wow. So you take somebody, help them discover what drives them, help them discover their passion, connect it with their talent, get them to now become a profitable enterprise in a sense. That's what you do, isn't it? That's what we do. And we help you figure out your passion and proficiency so that you can generate reliable recurring revenue. You see, the way of work is changing. Expecting it expecting a check every 30 days that life is going away but with your passion you can generate different streams of revenue with your passion and efficiency so that you can get paid you don't have to be paid once a month you can be paid daily you can be paid weekly it's just how you package the revenue that is coming in that will ensure that you don't go broke or you don't get stuck wow now it's interesting you talked about uh, times are changing i know in our parents days if you told your folks that uh 
my passion is music. I want to be a DJ. I want to be a dancer. I want to be something. They tell you, come on, be serious. Get a real job. You know, get That's some right. serious qualifications so you can get a real job. You're telling us something different. Go work in the bank. That's yeah. Go work for a bank. Go where the money is. Does it really prof? Is there a real profit in chasing your passion? That's what you're saying. Of course, there's a real profit because that we were created. We have been conditioned to think that go to school, work hard, get a job is the way to generate income. That is just one way. God did not create all of us to be bankers and white collar a job. God wants us also to have music, creative people, artists. Look at my dress. This is an artist, all right? So God, God has created diverse gifts, and these gifts keep growing. But the problem is we have remained conditioned in the go to school, get a job, you know, work hard. So with God, things are progressive. Our path is like a shining light. It shines brighter. Everybody has in them. We are fearfully, wonderfully made. Everybody has in them intrinsic gifts and graces that they came packaged with. Just like when the Mercedes leaves the store, it, it's going to make a lure home, <laughs> you know? So also, when with our gifts, everybody has gifts and graces, and then you go to school, you keep sharpening them, and then there are problems, there are things that you enjoy doing. And the things that you enjoy doing are a solution for somebody else. So if you can find enough people that have a problem that you can solve with your gifts and graces and your passion and your proficiency, you will always have money. So the mindset of going to school, getting a job is the only way to generate income, I think is what is killing us. Discovering who you are holistically as who God created you. What is your education? We don't throw the education away. We go under your skin. And your skin, we look at your skills, things that you know you have learned, your knowledge, things that you have read about, your education, all your degrees and your credentials, your exposure, things that have even hurt you. All right. The things that have hurt you are also an experience God allowed for you to help others. So wow. there's the experience and then there's the exposure, the good, the bad, and the ugly. After all, God has said that all things work together for the good of those who are called, you know, according to his purpose. So, yeah. and then your networks, who do you so surround you're, you're yourself help, you're, with? You're helping somebody mine into the assets that God has given them. And... I like that. Helping them mine the assets God has given them and the ones they have acquired on their journey while on earth before they come to us. All of it is wow. beautiful. Yes. Now, now it's obvious that your your business is your passion because clearly even as you're talking i can i can sense the passion for you what you're doing is what you love huh uh this you, is what i was called to do this, this <laughs> or it's not even what you love it's what you are called to do huh? I Let believe me, so. a lot of people right now i guess we're in the middle of this crisis and a lot of people uh even some who are listening right now uh there's, there's a lot of what we call right now forced entrepreneurship because people yes. are being retrenched there's also just people who had businesses that have hit a wall and they're just not finding any profit in those businesses anymore either because of the slowdown in the economy maybe they're waiting hopefully for things to change but then there's no certainty that things will ever change and go back to the new normal uh, there are people who are in that place where it's almost like um it's almost like the skills that i had the things that made me valuable are no longer valuable in the world we're in you mentioned earlier the world is changing how does one even restart i remember somebody in our business community actually wrote this and said i even want to start a business so we're talking last last month we we're talking about how do you find funding for your business this person said forget funding first of all how do i find the business how, how do i even start how do i even start to find the thing that i would like to do as a, mm. a so so whether i'm already running a business and it's not working or i've been retrenched or maybe just wanting to enter into this entrepreneurial space how does one even start and I like that question because even the Bible tells us that wisdom is the prophet. wisdom is the principal thing. So the first thing is wisdom. I like the guy who has said that it's not even about money. So where do you start? Like I said, we go under your skin. What do you have? All across the Bible, we see God asking people, what, what's in your hand? So right here where you, you're at, under your skin, there is something to mind. And what are your what is education? What is your knowledge? Things that you have learned by reading, whether it is books or going to seminars. Um, what are your experiences that hurt you? Where have you excelled? We tend to look at how we get our work, but we rarely look at how we, you know, how we've gone down. But even in the process of going down, there are lessons to learn. And then what what are your networks? When we look at the networks, uh, for instance, I work with small business owners. 
when I did this assessment for my chest, I looked at who else works with small business owners, the banks, because the small business owners make money, they take their money to the bank. So instead of looking for one business owner at a time, I started talking to banks and telling them, can support your small business owners they will make more money the money will come to you we'll all be happy when they need more money they're going to come and they will pay us for the work that we do so instead of looking for one one person when we look at the network we look at what are your skills what are the solutions you are providing who else has the same target audience that you can collaborate with and do more without competing but we told the bank your people need to be ready to access capital they are not compliant we can train them in that. Everybody's happy, there's no competition. It's a value that is complementary. So to answer that, that guy who's wondering what to do, feeling stuck, I think the first thing about feeling stuck is our mindset, Pastor M. It's all over. And as believers, we have a what, fantastic opportunity to go back and see what has God said about crisis. God has said that nothing can come to you except that which you can handle. And yeah. with everything that comes to you, he will... He is faithful, he'll provide a way of escape. So I always tell people, as long as you're still alive and you're breathing, there's a solution for you. There's a yeah. problem for you to solve. So wow. just get out of your crisis mode, jump on the crisis and figure out who needs what I what I can solve. Wow. And we, we need to get out of ourselves because we are here to serve. Everything that God put in us was not for ourselves, was to change the world, really. It's just that sometimes we, we undermine ourselves. We think it's, it's only this, it's only cooking chapati. I love eating chapati, but I don't cook it. The who delivers chapati to us every week, <laughs> all right? So she's solving a problem, she's getting paid. And she probably has many other freedoms that she sends chapati to. Wow. So we help people go under their skin to see just... what do they have and where can they start. And with social it. media now, you don't have to have a big budget to start, no. You just need to find where to start. And with wow. all these WhatsApp groups, there are people looking for somebody and uh, looking for somebody with something that, you know, one of us here. Wow. I'm going to come back to this because I think this is, that's such a powerful thing. Huh? I think we need to have another conversation. So I'm hoping we, this is actually part one. We're going to do part two next week and just dig no my, mine a bit into that. Maybe just let's conclude this part one with an, a story. Uh, maybe you have a story. Is there a story that illustrates some of what you're talking about? Okay. I'm sure you work with it's entrepreneurs that, from across the board. So, yeah, just pick one. Ah. <laughs> uh, there's the several stories. What I've noticed, uh, especially around this time of COVID, are people who have had a business for a while and they now feel that they're not able to serve their clients the way they have been serving. And a good example, lady who came to us, she has run an insurance company for 17 years. And uh, so she had the insurance company and she, she had a job. So I call her job the side hustle because the job ended and now she has the insurance company, but people are not buying insurance right now. So we did the skin test for her, and out of the skin test, we discovered that she has a, she has skills in governance, she has skills in organizational development, she loves training, she loves speaking to people, and she mentors families for free. Can you imagine <laughs> families that are going through some kind of distress? And then she has uh, what else did we discover? And then she has done mediation uh, certification because she's called to the court to help people, you know, out of court kind of cases. So we realized that she has a learning and development company in her and we've helped her figure you know create the company create the different products that she's going to sell out of you know out of that company and uh, she already actually got her first client her first client is a dental that has three locations and she was saying that um, she, she she doesn't have a problem for clients but she needs processes and this wow. lady that you know that we just set up the learning and development She's an OD expert, organizational development expert and governance. So we sent her to that client, you know, so she already had her first client. Wow. Company wow. that needed mentors, she already got a job there mentoring. And these are paid jobs. <laughs> now, interestingly for me, what I liked about the story when you shared it is she has a company, it's stuck right now because her, her sector is not moving, but you helped her find another stream of income that was very aligned to her passion. That isn't telling her stop what you're doing, but here is something else that can add a stream while you're waiting for this. And who knows, this might even become the future and this becomes the past, who knows? And so I think what exactly. you're saying is you're not stuck. Wherever you are, you can solve problems. 
based on your passion. Let me let me just ask if somebody wanted to connect with uh, Passion Profits, if somebody wanted to connect with your training, where would they go right now? Do you have a website or something that somebody can link up to? Okay, right now uh, we have a program every uh, we, we, every quarter we have a program that starts, and our next cohort for the business program starts in June. We go through an application process and uh, we offer it through our association called SME Founders Association. So you can go to SME Founders Association, you'll see the programs there and right now we have the application open for the June cohort and awesome. there's, uh, there's also scholarships so they can you know, oh. go to the smefoundersassociation.com before uh, the, what, when do you call it? Before the registration closes, the registration closes on the 10th. June okay, June 10th. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. So you heard it from her. If you would like to get into the training, there actually are scholarships available. I want all the church for business people who are who are interested in this. Let's let's fill up those scholarships. And what an amazing, amazing, amazing woman. I love your business. Your business is to help other people find their business. And I really yeah. you can't you can't it doesn't yeah. get better than that. <laughs> so thank hey, you. we're we're gonna come back to part two of this interview. Uh, but it, thank you so much, Rita, for your time. Thank you for having me, Pastor M. Awesome. Thank you, Frida. And what, you know, I'm so excited to be able to just keep bringing these kingdom entrepreneurs to you, introducing them to you. If you'd like us to share your story, if there's some things that God has been teaching you about kingdom business, hit me up and I'd love to share your story as well. But, you know, it's interesting for me, uh, uh, we, uh, even as we continue that interview next week, I want to summarize because I, I sense that Frida began us off on some conversations there that are really helpful. I want to summarize some three things from scripture that I really believe are important for us as we talk about the nature of kingdom business. In order to understand the nature of a kingdom business, I think you must first of all understand the nature of the kingdom business person, the businessman or woman. And I want us to just go straight back. For, to do that, you have to go back to the beginning, back to the creation. And for that, we turn to Genesis chapter 1 and read verse 26 to, 20, 26 to 28. And here's what it says. This is just your origin verse. Huh? It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Here's what I want to say. When we are talking about who you are as a kingdom entrepreneur, there are three things this passage will teach you. This is your, this is your inception verse. It's the one that tells you what you're, who you are and what you're here to do. So the three things I think we're going to learn from this passage tonight is your, anato your anatomy. What are you made of? Your assignment. What are you here to do with that kingdom business? And number three, your authority. What, what tools do you have at your disposal to help you get your business running? Uh, the first is your anatomy. You know, the first thing, what are you made of? Who are you as a kingdom entrepreneur? The Bible says, according to the Bible, we are composite beings. As a human being, you're composite. Why? Because the Bible says that humans were created of soil and then God's breath. The soil represents the physical nature, the animal nature that is part of us. That's why people say we're part of the animal kingdom, because we have that element to us. But that's not all there is to you as a human being. There's also the breath of God. God breathes into you, so you also have the spirit of God within you. The Bible says you're made, we are made in God's image. And what that means is that there's something of the divine in us. And this is what they fail to teach you in school, that you're not just an evolved animal. I mean, the, the evolution is fantastic. I mean, I, I, I studied, by the way, I'm a science major. Uh, biochemistry is what I, I got my degree in, my first degree in. And the interesting thing is when I studied the theories, even the theory of evolution, so-called, because it's not actually a theory. A theory uh, has a very different level of proof expected for it. It's actually a hypothesis. And the hypothesis tells us that there was this big bang uh, and that we are the product of these gases that... Uh, out of this random big explosion that happened uh, and basically they produced a living cell and over millions of years that living cell evolved into this lower primate with a small brain and that was our ancestor and you know what there's a lot of holes in that hypothesis there's a lot of holes i mean there are things that are there there's some steps that are there but they may point to a completely different conclusion from what this so-called uh, theory. There's a, a, a lot of mix of ideas there, natural selection, evolution, they're kind of mashed together 
and passed together as a fully cooked and fully proven theory, which is not actually quite true. What the Bible tells us is dramatic. And by the way, if you believe what the Bible tells you, you will act very differently from somebody who doesn't know this narrative. It tells us that we are not just advanced monkeys. We are not just complex amoeba. As a, as a kingdom entrepreneur, as a kingdom person, as a, I am made, as a human being, I'm made in God's image. And that means that in every one of us, there's the essence of divinity. I'm here to represent God. There's something about me that is divine. I am not God, but I am like God. That's what it means that I'm made in God's image. That's my anatomy. I'm going to come back to why that's important. But number two is your assignment. Remember, we said there are three things we're learning tonight. The second is your assignment. In other words, what are you here to do? Now, it says in this same scripture, when God created human beings in his image, he says, let them rule over the fish, the birds, the livestock, over all the earth. Other vers versions of the Bible say, let them have dominion. What does that mean? It means that human beings are the ones who are supposed to rule the earth. God creates this beautiful planet and then he delegates it to human beings. You're here to rule it on his behalf, to have dominion, to care for it on his behalf. So through human beings who are made in his image, God intends to establish divine rule on earth. He's basically a colonizing force. He wants to colonize the earth and help it resemble his nature and the nature of heaven. And who does he put in charge of bringing that transformation? You as a human being. So it's so interesting because <laughs> what I found in scripture that is so radical is God himself does not intervene on earth without a willing human being. I mean, that's the most radical thing. Read scripture and you're going to see that. That God actually respects, he delegates this authority. He doesn't micromanage. He gives us this assignment. And that's why he taught us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does that mean? That we are the answers to that prayer. As we're praying it, so we're making it happen. Why is your business here? Why did God give you that passion, that desire for something? Why did he give you a solution? Because your business, by the way, is supposed to be a solution for people. Why did he give you that solution? So that you can bring God's kingdom on earth. So that you can allow the, the nature of God's, of, of heaven to come upon earth. What is heaven like? If you read the Bible, you're going to find there's order, there's prosperity, there's health, there's provision, there's peace, there's joy, there's interrelationship, there's equality, there is justice. These are the qualities of heaven. And you know what your assignment is? You are God's agent to bring heaven down on earth. So your kingdom business, it's not just there to make you money. Uh, if you're a kingdom entrepreneur, you're not just there to make money. Money is actually a byproduct. It's a thing that helps you do your assignment. What's your assignment? To bring God's order on earth. To bring God's solution on earth. To help people to see God. To extend God's influence upon the earth. That's what your business is there for. That's your assignment. So, made in God's image. Assigned to represent God and bring his kingdom. The last thing is your authority. You know, many of us, like I said, when we delegate a task, we micromanage. Anybody ever had a micromanaging boss? Absolutely. The most irritating thing is somebody who cannot let you do the work. They have to be there over your shoulder, uh, even when you know how to do it. But you know what God does? He doesn't do it that way. He says, let them rule. He doesn't say, let me, let us rule with them. He says, let them rule. A complete transfer of authority to human beings. He is appointing humans as his only legal representation here on earth. And so we are his ambassadors. That's part of our assignment. We are his ambassadors. So authority is given with a, with a task that is delegated. And that's why I said the, the, the Almighty never interferes on earth without the cooperation of a human being. Whenever God wants to do something in the Bible, he looks for a willing person. Somebody who's able to say, look, God's kingdom is not coming on earth as it is in heaven. There's a problem. People are hurting. People are suffering. There's a solution that is needed. And the leader says, here I am, God send me. And God comes in, invited by that person, and he, he makes things happen. Uh, that's why the early church leader, St. Augustine, he had this famous quote. He said, without God, we cannot. Without us, God will not. What am I saying? I'm saying, listen, God expects us to be the answer to the prayers we pray on earth. And he's given us the authority. When Jesus went on to heaven, he said to his disciples, all authority has been given in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. He's restoring. He's giving authority to human beings. And you know, even when we pray, I mean, understanding how you pray for your business, because we're going to talk to about, I'm hoping we'll take some time at some point to just talk about how do you pray for your business. One of the things you want to understand that is fundamental for prayer, not just for your business, but for your children, for everything in life. 
that prayer is not reminding God of something he forgot to do. Yeah, you know, I used to wonder about that. Lord, why am I praying? So you know this stuff. Why am I asking you to, to bless this business? I mean, you know. <laughs> prayer is not reminding God to do something that he forgot to do. Prayer is not begging God to do something he neglected to do. Prayer is inviting the God of the universe to engage and intervene in the details of this earth because God will not come without my invitation. Mm. Listen, when you understand that, it just boggles your mind. You understand that God has called you to be his ambassador, that he's waiting for you to summon his authority, the authority he's given you to call him in, that he will not come in unless you invite him in, that when you pray, you're not praying to beg God. God already knows the situation. You're calling his authority now to come to bear into that situation. You're proclaiming it over your business. You're exercising your authority as God's agent, his ambassador, to release heaven's power to change the earth. And you know, here's the converse. It's also true that when we don't use our authority, then the world goes to the dogs. That's why we have corruption in all our sectors. That's why people are unhappy. That's why there's joblessness. That's why there's no... All this lack is because God's ambassadors have failed to, elev to, to engage God's authority to bring solutions to God's people. And so we must exercise the authority God has given us. So, so, that's, so basically today I'm, I'm on a very high level. I'm talking about the nature. This is the nature of kingdom business. What is the nature of kingdom business? Number one, I understand who I am. I am made in God's image. There's divinity in me. There's a spark of divinity. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes talks about that, that he has, made, he has put eternity in the hearts of men. That's my nature. So when I go into a business, I'm not just going as this guy. <laughs> no, no, no. I am a son of God. I am a daughter of God. Number two, my assignment. My assignment is to bring God's kingdom down on earth. So whether I am in the beauty industry, God created beauty. He's the author of it. I want to represent him. I want people to dignify beauty, not to debase it, which is what a lot of beauty industry is about. When you see pornography, that's debasing God's Im image and God's beauty. No, no, no. I want to elevate God's beauty. I want to elevate art because that's what God has called me to do. I'm actually in the business of the kingdom. When I am in, in law, if my business is a law firm, then my job is to bring justice on the earth. It's not just to represent people, it's to bring justice on the earth. If I'm in the business of, of agriculture, then I am feeding God's people. I'm creating solutions and bringing plenty to our people. This is, my, this is the thing that drives me. I'm here. That's my assignment that I'm extending. I want people to be able to, to live the way heaven intended them to live. This is the dignifying thing for my work. And then number three, I have authority. I'm not just a hustler. I am a sent person. By the way, that means I pray, for, I, I operate differently. I don't take the shortcuts of the world because I'm backed with authority. When I'm the ambassador of a powerful nation, then I don't come to, to yes, I'm polite, but I know that my word carries, when I, when I speak, I am representing a higher power. And I love that about Jesus. When you watch him on earth, he was a humble person. He was relaxed. But he, in little things he would say, you'd realize this man has authority. He would say things like, you know, I could just call a few legions of angels. 10,000 of angels could appear right now if I call them. He knows his authority. Do you know your authority as a kingdom entrepreneur? So I want to conclude there because tomorrow, we're gonna, next week, we're going to go a bit deeper and start talking about how do we exercise this authority? Why aren't we seeing authority happening in our businesses? Why are we struggling as Christians? Because I really believe the, many, the, the reason a lot of Christian entrepreneurs are, are, are hustling and struggling just like everybody else is because we failed to understand the principles of kingdom business, that God wants us to be his managers and his ambassadors here on earth. Now, so we're going to be talking about this next week. Please make sure your friends watch this if they have, if they're not part of this. Remember, we're talking about the nature of kingdom business. That's what we want to fill June with. I want your mind to be reeling as you walk into your workplace, understanding I have authority. I'm here to represent an agenda. I'm not just here to negotiate. I'm here to bring, to, to call for surrender. I'm here to actually ensure that God's agenda is done. When the ambassador of the U.S. is here in Kenya, he's not here to, to be nice. He's here to make sure that the U.S. interests are represented in this country. You are an ambassador of heaven. You are here through your business to ensure that heaven's agenda is represented in your industry. That's what you're here for. Once you understand this, things begin to change. You start to think differently. As you rebuild your business, my prayer is that you rebuild it, not just as any business, but as a kingdom business. So I want to conclude with that. 
Hey, listen, we're going through the Proverbs challenge. If you've not started yet, please pick up a, bi- a Bible book. It's not too late. We're just in chapter three. So uh, start by reading chapter four tomorrow, Proverbs chapter four, and then you can catch up with the rest. And every day we're just listening to God's word and saying, God, what are you saying about business? What are you teaching me about my enterprise? What are you teaching me about myself as a kingdom business person? You want to be be able to engage into God's word. Also, please remember to join the WhatsApp community uh, every week. I mean, uh, we we have content that's coming to, to you in that community just to help you. I really believe in this season, God wants to bring up a revolution in the marketplace, that the gospel will not be extended in our, in our generation because of pastors in pulpits, but it's going to be because of business kingdom entrepreneurs in the marketplace, people like you uh, who are watching this tonight. So make sure that your friends are listening to this. Join the WhatsApp community and let's grow together. Allow me to pray for us as we conclude. I want to pray for you over a proverb. Uh, in Proverbs chapter 3, again, just the scripture we read today, There's a powerful thing it says that really resonates with what we're talking tonight. It says, the Lord laid the earth's foundations with wisdom's blueprint. By his living understanding, all the universe came into being. By his divine revelation, he broke open the hidden foundations of the deep, bringing secret springs to the surface as the mists of the night drip down from heaven. Father, I pray for your entrepreneurs here. What a dramatic declaration of your sovereignty in your word it tells us that even our business our thinking whoever we are we were created by you it is you who calls us into business and i just pray for any entrepreneur who's listening to this who's a believer who in the past has been a christian on sunday and an entrepreneur the rest of the week never understood that those two things were meant to actually be connected and one lord i pray that none of us would operate like this going forward give us wisdom That, Lord, our faith would become the driver for our business. That, Lord, our relationship with you would become the impetus for why we wake up and go into that business every day. That when people see us, it will be better than seeing any pastor. They will be drawn to Jesus because of our calling, because we know who we are and we understand our calling as kingdom entrepreneurs. And so I just pray for your people as they listen to this tonight. I pray that, Lord, you just awaken in us a passion for you and a passion for our business. That, Lord, we'll not just do it because we're hustling for money. No, 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 that's not what you created us for. That, Lord, you'd help us understand this kingdom purpose, that business is something that we are anointed for. And that, Lord, every single one of us is called to extend the kingdom of the business, uh, the, the business of the kingdom, wherever you've placed us. And so I bless you, God's people, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.